Hello and welcome to our third lesson on high school algebra. My name is Joydeep Ghosh and I am a quantum physicist. Okay, so at the end of today's lesson, I'll give you a challenge problem to think about. So be sure to comment below if you figure out the solution. So far, we have been talking about sets, well-defined collections of distinct objects. Until now, we haven't focused much on the nature of these objects themselves other than that they are mathematical entities. But here is an interesting question. Can these objects themselves be other sets? If so, would that mean we are dealing with a set of sets? The answer is yes. Set theory absolutely allows it. None of the nine foundational rules we have discussed prevents it. And this is precisely what makes set theory such a powerful language to describe the world of math. In today's lesson, my goal is to get you ready to explore a little deeper so that in our next class we can dive into the fascinating world of set theoretic operations where the fun really begins. So today we will introduce uh, four important concepts of set theory that are required to discuss set theoretic operations. So let's start with the simplest one, uh, which is equality of two sets. Now, as we define set as well-defined um, uh, collection of distinct objects, uh, then as per definition, as we can see uh, intuitively even, that A equals to B, where A and B are both sets, we can say that A will be equal to B if they have exactly same uh, members. Okay, so it doesn't matter which order, and we have seen that before. So, for example, if A contains one, two, and three, the first three natural numbers, and let's say B has one, three, and two. The order doesn't matter. They have the exactly same members, and we can clearly say um, as per definition that A equals to B. Okay, so simple. Okay, great. So next, uh, let's uh, introduce the concept of complement. Now, in our last lesson, we have introduced um, the concept of universal set. What we say that uh, universal set denoted by U, this is actually context specific, right? So if we if we are in a context where we know that the only natural numbers met matter, then U can be the set of all natural numbers, right? That's the way we denote the natural numbers. Now, complement of a set A, so for example, complement of a set A, which is denoted by AC, A superscript C, this is the complement of a set A, um, is defined as a um, set of elements not in A, but in U in that context, right? So I will show a very quick example, both finite and infinite set, but essentially you can think of A complement as a set consisting of all the elements that are not in A, right? So for example, if I say that A um, is actually a set uh, with any, it's, it's a, in the set builder notation, uh, n such that n is odd, then um, you can understand from here that a complement is going to be m where m is even because we know that if a natural number is not odd, then it has to be even, right? And um, <clears throat> the example for a finite set that is um, simple. For example, uh, if my universal set is single digit numbers, so starting from one to all the way to nine. And if I say that B is a set, which is the single digit odd numbers. So one, three, five, seven, nine. Then of course B complement is going to be two, four, six, and eight. Okay, good. So that's how complement is defined. 
now let's move on to our third topic today which is subset uh, of course subset of a set that's what we mean uh, before even uh, defining it let me motivate it through an example let's say I have a fruit basket where I have some fruits for example I have an apple um, I have a strawberry I have a papaya and I have a guava right so one way to think about this collection of fruits in this basket is um, by saying that there are some red fruits like apple and strawberry and there are some green fruits like papaya and guava so you can actually think of this collection of red fruits as a sub collection of the fruit basket right because what we mean by that is every member of that sub collection like apple and strawberry is also a member of the fruit basket right that's all we mean now this is exactly the same concept for subset we say that a is a subset of p and by, by the way this is the notation uh, let me highlight it here for uh, subset and i'll come back to it later but we will say that a is a subset of b if every element of a is also an element of b okay so just like every element of a red fruit um, in this fruit basket is also an element in the fruit fruit basket itself right so that is exactly the concept of subset now uh, let me spend a little bit of time uh, on this notation this this particular notation uh, which uh, essentially denotes the notation for subspect subset this notation actually reminds us that algebraic notation of less than and they have a lot of similarity and and uh, of course um, uh, many people think that that's how they probably are adapted for the set theory it has uh, many similarity right so for example in algebra we say that a number a is less than b uh, in in a very similar sense actually um, for set theory uh, when we say that a is a subset of b the size of a is less than the size of b because in some in if a and b both finite right so uh, because a is contained in b and also note that <clears throat> just like in algebra there is a situation that a can be equal to b and our definition of subset leaves it open too because we did not say anything about b uh, we did not say if B has additional elements or not. If does not, if if there is a situation where B does not have additional element, then we will denote it like this, which means A is contained in B, A is a subset of B, but A can also be equal to B, the way we define the equality between two sets in our first concept. Okay? Okay, so that's number one. And another concept is just, um, let's say, in algebra, um, zero if we are thinking about the natural numbers then zero is less than n where n belongs to the set of natural numbers similarly for set theory we will say that phi which is the null set um, is actually a subset of a where a is any arbitrary set so whenever we think about a subset any set at least has one subset which is the phi itself which is the null set that we discussed last time okay great let's work out a fun exercise that will help us smoothly transition from um, subset to our final topic today called power set okay so let's say that a is our familiar set of first three natural numbers and let us try to construct all possible subsets that we can construct using these elements elements of a okay so of course um, one subset let me denote it as b1 is just let me take one okay this is a subset because uh, the member of b1 is included in a 
similarly two and b3 equal to three okay good i can do more i can construct a subset just one and two i can construct subset two and three and b6 equal to one and three taking all uh, pairs of elements from a <clears throat> uh, am I done no I'm not the way we define subset we also said that phi is a subset of any set so phi is also a subset of a right and finally the way a subset is defined it actually leaves that option open that a subset can be equal to the set itself so finally I can write b8 which is 1 2 3 now this is exactly same as a but that doesn't prevent us by saying that b8 is also a subset of a right because that's a, that's the way we define subset okay great now um, that actually brings us to our final topic um, which is power set so power set of a set let's say in this example power set of a is set of all subsets for this case set of all subsets of a right and if we denote power set of a like this then in this situation power set of a is a set where each member is a set and these sets are the subsets of a so power set of a has to be written as b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 and b8 okay so that is the definition of a power set if i am given any set a then whatever the subset that I can construct, all the subsets that I can construct are members of the power set P of A. Okay, now notice one thing that is <clears throat> that is really interesting here and that is uh, going to be um, um, your challenge problem. Um, you can think about it, you can comment on it um, in the video, uh, under the video as well. So, a has three members and therefore so a um, has three elements and which essentially gave us that p of a has eight elements right now it is actually true and you can work it out by yourself that if there is a set let's say a1 um, and if it has four elements then you can see that the power set of that one will have 16 elements slightly generalizing as you can see here if a set has if a set has n elements then that will imply that the power set of uh, power set of that set uh, I will just denote it like that whatever this whatever the way I denote the set will have 2 to the n elements now this is what I'm not gonna explain now I will rather challenge you or invite you uh, to think about it and post in comments but this is a very important um, result that gets used in various different areas in math and um, this is rather a logic you don't need to know any additional math in order to explain to it um, but um, you can do it logically but uh, think about it and post in the comments okay so we have done the four concepts that are promised uh, in the beginning and now we are fully ready to move on to um, the, the fun part of set theory which is set theoretic operation and as I mentioned then things will get more clear when we can visualize it and that's what that's how we will conclude our discussion on set theory good thank you